Hey guys, welcome to this channel. In previous session, we saw what is AWS RDS and then we saw how we can create RDS database practically. So if you have not seen that video yet, you can see that from I button. Now let's talk about RDS security and the first topic I want to talk about is encryption. So we have at rest encryption which is data that's not in movement and there is possibility to encrypt the master database and the read replicas using AWS KMS which is the key management service of AWS using AES 256 encryption. So when you do encryption you define it at launch time and if the master is not encrypted the read replica cannot be encrypted. So there is a common scenario question of the exam as well. You can also enable transparent data encryption also called TDE for Oracle and SQL Server. Also that provides you uh, alternative way of encrypting your database. Now there is in-flight encryption which is always going to be around SSL certificates and they are used to encrypt data to RDS while in flight. So while being sent from your client into your database. For this you provide SSL option with a trust certificates when connecting to the database and you will have established an SSL connection. To enforce SSL to make sure that all the clients must use SSL. If you are using PostgreSQL, there is a console parameter group you need to set called rds.force SSL equals 1. And you are using MySQL within the data database. You need to run this SQL statement called the grant usage onto my SQL user require SSL. Again, it's pretty obvious what it does. Just show you. No, PostgreSQL is a parameter group and my SQL is going to be SQL command within the database. So there are some RDS encryption operations that you should know. And the first one is how do I encrypt an RDS backup? So something you should know is that if you have an unencrypted RDS database and you take a snapshot of it, then the snapshot itself will be encrypted. And similarly, if you take a snapshot of an encrypted RDS database, then by default, all the snapshots are going to be encrypted by default all the time. And so what you can do is copy a snapshot take a unencrypted into a cryptated one. So if you take a snapshot of unencrypted RDS database and you copy it, you can create an encrypted version of the snapshot very easy, right? So now that brings us into how do we encrypt an unencrypted RDS database. Based on the information received, the first thing we do is that we create a snapshot of an unencrypted RDS database which will be unencrypted and then we will copy the snapshot and for the copied snapshot will enable encryption. So now we have a copied encrypted snapshot and thanks to the encrypted snapshot we can restore the database from the encrypted snapshots and that will be give us an encrypted RDS database. And then we just migrate all our application from the old encrypted RDS database to the new encrypted RDS database. And we will delete the old database. And that is some operation you should know. So very simple, you just see it once. And when it comes up in the exam, you know about it. So now let's talk about network and IAM security. For network security, well, our RDS database are usually deployed within a private subnet, not a public one. 
so make sure not to expose your database to the world wide web and rds security works by leveraging security groups that you attach to your rds instance they are exactly the same concept as for ec2 instances and it controls which ip or which security groups can communicate with rds for access management which is user management and so on and permission you have iam policies they help you only control who can manage aws rds so who can create a database who can delete a database who can create or read replica and so on and for traditionally connection to the database you need to use a traditional username and password okay to log into the database or as well see in the next slide for just rds mysql and rds postgresql you can use iam based authentication okay so bottom line is the database security usually is from within the database now let's talk about how we can connect to rds using iam authentication so as i said it is only for mysql and postgresql and you don't need a password this time you just need something called an authentication token and that can be obtained directly using iam and the rds api tools we will see this in the diagram in a second and the authentication token because it's short lived it has a lifetime of 15 minutes so here's the example we have our ec2 security group and our ec2 instance and then we have our mysql rds database in rds security group so the ec2 instance will have something called an iam rule and we will what we will see what that means when we get deep into iam rule for ec2 but the idea is that the ec2 instance thanks to the iam rule is going to be able to issue an api call to the rds service to get back an authentication token and using the token it's going to pass the token all the way to the while connecting to the mysql database and make sure the connection is encrypted and then it will connect securely to mysql database the benefit of this approach is that the network in and out must be encrypted using ssl iam is going to be used to centrally manage user instead of managing user from within the database so it's more central type of authorization and you can leverage iam roles and ec2 instance profiles for easy integration and as i said we will see what i am roles and ec2 instance profile as very very soon so summary of rds security you have encryption at rest which is done only when you first create the database instance and if it is unencrypted you need to create a snapshot copy of the snapshots to create encrypted it and then you create a new database from the encrypted snapshot and that will encrypt your database and your responsibility is to check all the ports ip security groups inbound rules free database security groups or take care of all the in database user creation and permissions or as we as we saw from before managing through iam for mysql and postgresql create a database with or without public access so is it going to be in public subnet or in a private subnet ensure the parameter groups and the database is properly configured to only allow ssl connections so making sure encryption is happening 
and what is Amazon's web service responsibilities? Well, it is to make sure that you don't have SSH access, that you don't have to do a database patching, you don't have to do OS patching and you don't have a way to look at underlying instance. Again, that is its responsibilities. So the RDS is a service offered to you and you can leverage it or not. But to me, honestly, it is one of the best service of Amazon. So it makes a lot of sense to use RDS. All right. That's it for this lecture. I will see you in the next lecture. So if you are new to this channel, subscribe and stay tuned for the upcoming video. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.